I'm Jim Treehey, 92 years old. Lived in North Carolina about three years in, in Raleigh. And uh, this was back in segregation days, way back in 1937, 38, 39. And the war came along and I was eligible for the draft, so I enlisted in the Army. <laughs> That's me in the uniform. Studying uh, communication, radio communication, because I had a ham license, ham radio license. And I knew the code, the Morse code, so I had a head start. And then we heard on the radio the big announcement of Pearl Harbor, and that was a shock to all of us because we weren't in any war at that point, you know. He said, oh, oh, this is it. And sure enough, it was. I was uh, so sailing out of San Francisco in about two months from then, early 42. And uh, went all the way down to uh, Antarctica. You ask why we did that to avoid the submarines, Japanese submarines. We went all the way down there, it got real cold, and then we went all the way across the tropics where it got really hot and landed in southern Australia. And then I went by train up to uh, northern Australia in Queensland area, which is in Townsville is the name of the town. It's the house we lived in down there, three of us. I got converted to uh, the base radio that they established up there, which was a base radio made contact with all the major locations in the United States and Australia and the Army and where the Navy, where it was located. We had about 15 different constant. I was the chief radio operator. And did that for about nine months. We got bombed there, and, but I had, didn't see any direct contact. Although the Japanese got within 10 miles of us. This is, uh, I said, the, the barbed wire on the, on the beach. And then I got called in to Sydney, at the University of Sydney, and interviewed by Major there. And uh, he selected two of us. And I didn't know exactly what they're, invo what they're involved with. They wouldn't tell me. But finally, by observation, I found out there was radar of what they were doing. We'd locate the bomb. Uh, the direction the bomb was coming in and all that on the radar. And actually, what we were doing is developing antennas that would tell where a signal was coming from. And also radar signals from the enemy radar signals. Deflecting it by throwing a window, we called it window, but there's nothing but tension that you did put on Christmas trees. Throw it out from the plane, which I did uh, sometimes, and it would uh, reflect the radar signals so that they would think there's, there's a whole armada of airplanes up there but it would only actually be number one doing it. So they had all sorts of tricks we'd do like that. I was sitting on the airport at Clark Field in Manila waiting for transportation to go to Okinawa all by myself. <laughs> I travel around a lot by myself. Just in time to invade Japan unfortunately. <laughs> They dropped the bomb, the A-bomb, Nagasaki, and uh, it was uh, a good thing for us, I'll tell you, because there was about a million of us over there at this time, I guess, that were going to invade Japan, and they figured the casualties were number into the millions, you know, of Americans, but, and the Allies, soldiers, but the Japanese himself, because when taking Okinawa, we find that they would not s surrender. They'd jump off cliffs and, and kill themselves rather than surrender. It would have been a really bloody invasion if we'd had to go into Japan. As it was, it was bloody enough. And Kate Kaiser, who at that time was a very popular radio entertainer, I was called up on the stage and he interviewed me for a few minutes and then told me I was, handed me my uh, papers that I was going to be released from the Army. Intending Sergeant James Tree on his way back to the United States. And everybody cheered and made a big fuss out of it, you know, because that was a, supposed to be the first one out, you'd say. So I went home as fast as I could go, <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> After World War II, I went to art school 
and uh, I was a graphic artist for 25 years. I went to the University of Maine until I was a junior, uh, studying uh, electrical engineering. I was in the class of 51. And so many were graduating that there was jobs are hard to find. So I thought I'd do something I enjoyed doing, and that was drawing. My first job was working for Bemis and uh, in a small town where I am now, Pepper, where they printed bags, flexible packaging of bags. This was done by hand most of those days, and there was no computers. And uh, it's, well, it would start probably with a rough draft, like this one is. And then we'd make a, make a full-scale drawing or painting. Actually, we painted these things with uh, designers' colors. And then later on, when they introduced them, markers. They weren't around in 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> Hand lettering is something they don't do anymore. This was done by hand, you know. I didn't even trace it. I didn't have anything. We didn't have any way to produce the type. And that could take me, you know, a day or two, a couple of days anyway, and uh, maybe longer. And today, they never consider doing anything, spending that much time on it. You could do it with a computer in a short of time. We did a lot of fertilizer bags, but. Uh, I had also sugar bags, salt, and I drew that uh, as an original. After 10 years there, I saw another business in the area that seemed to be progressing, and so I joined NEBS. And this was a, a layout I made, and uh, this is a printed version of the same thing. I was the creative director and that was my career up to then. <laughs> As I said, later on, I took up watercolors. What is your name, Sergeant? Come up close. James Tree. Same James Tree. Well, right, right, where are you from? Uh, Belfast, Maine. Belfast, Maine. Okay. Say, uh, how long have you been overseas? About 38 months. Sergeant James R. Tree of Radar and Radio Countermeasures Unit is relieved of present assignment and of further duty in this theater and will proceed by the first available transportation to the United States.